All right, well, maybe I'll, I'll start. Um, welcome, everybody. So um, <clears throat> once again, I'll just think for people that might have missed it, I'm putting in the chat. the screen and get started. Good. So people see my um, this this web page that says the National Coke Education Program and it's the ad hook on it. So um, so this is part of it was a big European project called eCraft to Learn, where a, 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 more than half of the stuff was developed. But then at the University of Oxford, we've been continuing it. And we think of it as having six pieces. There's um, extensions to SNAP for various ways to do speech synthesis, other ones for speech recognition, image recognition, and then there's ones of having to do with natural language processing um, and um, various miscellaneous ones that sort of take um, machine learning models and make them available to use in your SNAP projects. And uh, the one I'm going to focus on today is the one that where you actually build the neural net from, from scratch inside of SNAP. And what I'm pointing to here are the, um, the, are the libraries. And one thing I do is whenever there's a, a library, like this is the one we'll be talking about, you can just get the blocks to import into your world. But here you've got um, uh, little samples of uh, most of the blocks from the library. So you can get a sense of what they do with little comments or something. But the other thing that we developed, and that's where I'll focus on, is, um, is these programming guides. So I'm going to open that up right here. And um, kind of inspired by the beauty and joy of computing these guides don't just focus on the programming stuff, but talk about some of the background information and have, especially some of the earlier guides go very big on societal impact and all that. But what I found when working with students sometimes is, is it's hard to sort of, uh, that can be distracting. So you can click here and say, all I want to look at is the programming instructions and it just hides the stuff that's not uh, otherwise relevant. Um, so the, um, the, the technical innovation and, and the way we did it is kind of, uh, kind of a bit of a hack <laughs> is how to put it on the side of a web page, uh, a window into, um, a snap. So this is just a screenshot, but when I click on it, it becomes uh, live. And sometimes being inside of a web page isn't what you want, so there's a, a block that'll just open this up in a new tab. And maybe I'll do that right now just to make things easier to see. And uh, make this bigger too. So one of the styles behind the, uh, this library is to provide uh, simple versions and then full featured versions of most things. So this, this is mostly showing the, the sort of simple versions and they don't actually work very well for this particular problem. So this little example that's just meant to get started is it, it does um, what's called supervised learning where you've got some input and output and the system's trying to <clears throat> learn given some new input to, pr to predict uh, what would be the appropriate output. And in general, this could be, you know, classifying text or images or uh, predicting all sorts of things. But here, 
to keep it as simple as possible, it's just a, a mathematical relationship. But to make it a little bit more challenging for the computer, this example is where it's trying to figure out or approximate the, the idea of a, a square root. So the, uh, you give a name to your uh, model, and then you say how many layers it has. So this is this idea of the reason it's called deep neural nets is because there's what are called hidden layers between the input and the output. So here we're saying that the input, which is going to just be a single number, should be looked at by 100 different neurons. And each one of those 100 should be connected to 20 other neurons. And those 20 should be connected to one that's going to be the output. So creating this model, I just click on it. And this is falling back on tensorflow.js that, um, <coughs> why is this? No. Oh, there we go. That um, Google developed a couple of years ago. And it has many advantages. Maybe some of you are familiar with like um, machine learning for kids, some of these other ways of doing something similar. They have to rely upon um, some AI cloud services. And some of our other work also does, but this, all this is happening in the browser without any um, need to do any um, network. And when you're doing things with images or sounds, that bit of privacy can be very important. Also, if you're doing it in a place where the network isn't very fast or reliable, this advantage. Also, you, there's no need to have an account Now I'm going to create the, the data that I want to train it. So what this is just a bunch of numbers. I, just, I don't know why I picked those. And but the tricky thing here is what it's saying is that the input is the square of the numbers and the output is the numbers. So that's why it's going to be trying to get the square root. So here is how you start up the training. And here we're saying to go through uh, 50 cycles. 500 cycles where each time it's trying to get a little closer to a uh, better uh, result. And this particular uh, example exercise actually intentionally does a really bad job, partly because the idea would be as a student, you should sort of try to tweak it, make it uh, a bit better. Um, we can also click this and sort of see how the how it's going. And we could actually see this is one of these problems with a graph that automatically scales. So it started off with an error of 4 million. And now it's got an error of about 100. So this graph is pretty useless. Anyways, we could go back to snap. And here it's finished and it gave us some indications. It took 40 seconds and uh, it, it never got a very good uh, got rid of the loss very well. So we could ask it something here, what would be the square root of 36? And the number is really, the answer is really terrible, same as that. And if we say uh, some other examples, you can see that it's really doing a, a very poor job. So if we go back to uh, the guide, here's actually a, um, a version that will come up with a really pretty good approximation for square root. And the difference is it's, it's choosing some of the parameters better. It's making a bigger model. It's using a thousand numbers instead of 20. But the problem with showing this is it could take like 10, 15 minutes. So we won't do that. But just to prove that it could work, you can save your model. And um, right, so this is what would happen if you did train it for um, that amount of time. So I could load the model here. And notice I'm doing this right inside the guide. And now if I say, what's the square root of 2, 1, 49, and 900? The 2 wasn't so great. 1 is pretty good. 49 came out pretty good. So, and this is, again, you could keep working on this. So this is the kind of basic thing you could do. But before I kind of uh, encourage all of you to start playing with it and I'll be around to help, I want to give a better, a bigger sense of what are all the 
other possibilities on this page. So, um, so here's a, a, a very simple example of using it for something a little bit useful. So <clears throat> maybe I'll start it up because it takes, well, maybe I'll start it up in a, uh, oh, here it is, in a new tab just so we could see better. Uh, sometimes it remembers that I like a larger presentation. All of these work in the, the, the SNAP standard release. Again, the only reason it's using a clone is, is to make it work, interact better with being um, embedded in a web page. So I'll, I'll explain what this does in a minute, but I wanted to start it up because it takes um, a little bit of time. So what this program did was, <coughs> was it creates um, just some random numbers with a particular hue and saturation and brightness, these three numbers. And then um, you're, it goes through them one by one asking you to give a name to those colors. So it's a bit tedious. So that's one reason it starts off where I've already named 50 of them or something. But if somebody wants to go further, they could have any number of examples and use their own. And what, what it's doing right now is very much like what we saw a minute ago with square root. The bigger difference is that it's taking in three numbers and producing um, a number that's really an index into a, a list of, of labels, essentially little trickier than that, but it's all kind of packaged up in this way. And um, now it's ready. So every time I hit the space bar, it should try to name the, the new uh, It's not doing very good. <laughs> it thinks I have, um, it says it's got a good accuracy. I don't know why today <laughs> it's um, doing a terrible job. But what it's supposed to do here is uh, pick a new random color, completely random, and then uh, ask it to uh, come up with a name for it, which is basically um, running the model and seeing what how confident it is for the different uh, values. So, sorry that today, it does say that the, uh, the, the loss here was pretty high. Yeah, I don't know why. I, one thing you, you have to understand about these neural nets is they start off with completely random weights and then the, the training tries to improve them. And you find, I find that less than 10% of the time, it just starts off with really screwy weights and it never managed to learn. So it could be that if I click this again in 30 seconds, it'll come up with a better one. But uh, I'd rather have you guys play with it. So let me do a bigger overview and hopefully you can imagine how this one works. By the way, I'm open to questions, but I don't uh, see anything yet. So, um, so this one is one I very much like, and it's also kind of fun to play with it. So what, um, what it does is it, it's, um, it generates uh, a random image, and it's just doing kind of forward some random amount, turn some random amount, change color some random amount, change your pen width, that kind of a program. And I could say, well, this is average, so I'll put it three stars. And that one I don't like very much, I'll give it one star. And that one I don't like very much, I'll give it one. That's average in my mind. That's terrible. So <laughs> that one's maybe average. So far, I haven't seen anything really good. Maybe that's better than average. It, it, obviously, it's picking up on my taste. So after I've <clears throat> done this a few times, got 10 examples. Maybe I would say I really like that one. Um, 
it, here's the little help information. And once I've rated enough, I could just type L and what it should be uh, doing. There we go. Is um, it, everyone is watching? So I can click I. And we can see how the uh, learning is going. And it seems to be making some progress. The, the losses are, are dropping. And um, we could uh, go back to SNAP. And what this one does once it's uh, finished is uh, it'll generate new ones. You still rate it, but then it says what, what, it, what how it thought you would have rated it. You could see how well it's able to predict your so let me just give you a sense of some of the other ones. There's ones that have to do with text. We, there's a way to turn sentences into numbers and then feed them into your neural network. There's um, uh, just ways to save and load things. And then here, this ah, sorry, a uh, discussion about um, some ideas about how to pull in real world data and be able to predict something. And the example that kind of uh, illustrate here is this like trying to connect up um, influenza and uh, weather data or something. So trying to see if, if previous weather data has any influence on the number of influenza cases. And finally, there's one about um, playing tic-tac-toe where it's trying to learn to play better, the program starts already knowing. It. So what I thought we would do for the remaining time is um, uh, let you guys start to try this and I'll be around to answer questions or if anybody uh, discovers something or finds something interesting, I think uh, we could let you share the screen and we could see it. But just to remind everybody how you get here, um, if um, if you start with um, this uh, home page, and then to see the guide, it's um, it's this one here that says making machine learning neural nets. And I should say that it works well in, in Chrome and not um, so well in other browsers. So are there any questions before I let you guys try to explore this with me being around to, to help? Yeah, hi, Ken. Uh, this is Hagai. I put something in the chat. Uh, basically, what's the oh. age range of, of... Oh, yeah, yeah. So... Um, so the overall project has a broad range because some of the things are just blocks for, you know, putting, making, being able to put, do speech recognition so that you could just say, you know, it was an eight-year-old that was so excited when she, all she did was made it so that if you said the word dance, her sprite would do a little dance, but she thought it was so great because she was able to talk to her or something. So some of the resources here are for very young children. But um, we, we, we were planning to do some um, testing with some 15 year olds uh, and with COVID it never ended up happening. So this has not really been, um, and it's fairly new, so it's not really been used, but I think it varies. Some of it does get, you could get deeper and deeper and more and more complex, but there's some of the things are, are pretty, uh, simple. And some of the examples are much more of the sort like we saw with naming colors or rating pictures, where there's already a working program and then the students just goal is to sort of see if they can make it be better, which I think requires less uh, background, less expertise. Uh, hopefully that answers. Uh, yeah, it does. And, and then the second part, maybe we don't really know what the 
age range really is. Yeah. Uh, the, the but second we're, part, yeah. we're quite certain that this is much, much easier than Python or the equivalent. Yeah. Ken, can I ask a, a follow up um, as far as sure. do, do you expect, um, let's say, the more, you know, the, the older users to actually go into the blocks or create new blocks or, or change, um, you know, basically the code as opposed to uh, changing parameters and, and using it on different applications? Yeah, my, my image is that at first it will be more like just tweaking different uh, parameters saying, okay, maybe if I add an extra layer, it'll do better. Oh, but look how much longer it takes to train or something. Um, those kinds of things in the beginning or, or the more obvious thing, like I said about even the square root one, which is that it'll do a lot better if you give it a thousand examples of numbers in their square root than just 20. So that there are these kind of um, things that they could explore, but also that are kind of generic lessons about today's machine learning technology. Um, but the hope is that, you know, they'll get the idea of, in some ways, it isn't that hard to build a model and train it and then use it for prediction. What's really hard, and this is what, why some people get huge salaries, is to do it really well, where you come up with the right architecture, the right kind of parameters for the training so that the model um, ends up being um, more accurate than if you just sort of did it as an amateur. So I think this isn't that hard to do. It's just hard to do really well, but doing it good enough, I think is often uh, all that's important from a pedagogic point of view. Oh, it's good. Some people have already uh, trained the square root. So, Ken, is this something that only runs browser-based, or can it be run locally? Yeah, so the, we have a, a link, actually, right here, somewhere on the front page or something, about how, um, about how you can, um, just like with Snap, you could download the whole thing. You could download Snap as well as I mean, if you have a, so, so you're basically running it off of your uh, local web service that, server, which could just be on your laptop. So there's no need to have a network connection once you've downloaded everything into your um, local file system. Um, yeah, somewhere here, I thought I had a. Is it on this teacher guide page? Saying about. Um, the offline version. Oh, oh yes, why am I thinking? So this is the, the, the guide, but the, it's the, the home page that says um, uh, Yeah, it's possible to download the files and, and run all of the, okay. um, the ones, but some of the other ones in this library do require a network, but most of them don't. So you can download everything and run it. Uh, locally. Well, we, we often work with kids in very rural areas, so their internet connections aren't fantastic. Yeah, so with, um, I, I there's a the chapter here about uh, using pre-trained uh, learning models and also doing some um, fine tuning of existing models. I, I cooperated with people in Indonesia that were trying it out with high school students and they too had, uh, they had network connection, but it wasn't, it, it collapsed as soon as, you know, uh, 30 students started using it so that it became important that they could just have a copy of it, like on a memory key or something. Um, 
Yeah, so if you've already got, if there's some model that you actually want to bring into here, um, Google has uh, a Python library that you could use to translate from, uh, for example, this uh, model here that's uh, created in uh, Keras. But basically, most, most of the models, it's, you could, if you know how to run their converter in Python, you could convert it to the tensorflow.js version and then just use it in, in the browser. And the, there are definitely, um, oh, speaking of that, yeah, and there definitely are, are blocks for just loading in a, a model that's either um, on your local file system or uh, you know, a URL anywhere. But I wanted to actually show something um, kind of new related to that, uh, which well, I'll just say it and show it, but is that uh, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, managed to make it possible to import a model trained in on the teachable machine. So you could use Google's teachable machine to train with images or sound or poses. Well, poses isn't quite working because there's a version problem, but the other two work fine. And you can um, uh, download the model. And first off, the Google lets you save the model either on your local disk or on their server. And then you could uh, bring it into um, Snap and use it in your projects. Oh, the one you're pointing to already is a TensorFlow.js uh, model. So it should be the case that, um, <clears throat> let's go back to, blocks for saving and loading models. So there's, there, you could just basically, you could give a full URL here, you know, the usual HTTP ones. This is just because it's coming off of my server. Um, so if you, if you find a URL to the model, you should be able to just load it right in. Um, oh yeah, the confident program is, <coughs> so there's a, a block that it relies on that's also provided by Google that, um, I mean, there's the block I did, but the underlying model that the block relies on is called the universal sentence encoder. And it can take any sentence and turn it into 512 numbers. And once you have 512 numbers, then you could uh, train it where you say these 512, the way I did it with the confident one is that there were example sentences that either got a one if it was very confident, a minus one if it was very um, opposite of confident, whatever it is, uh, uh, and, and a zero if it was just neither one, neutral or something, and then trained it with uh, 30 or 40 or 50 of those examples. And, uh, and then it comes out when you give it a new sentence with uh, the confidence scores for those three categories, you know, confident, uh, unconfident, or neutral. So that's how that one works. Um, I think it's on the page here. And 
but the funny thing about this one is that sometimes it'll say you're 103% confident just because of uh, the, the way the scoring works. I don't want to fix all these things because I think that's an opportunity for the student and the group. Um, so let's see if are there uh, some questions that have come up here. Uh, mostly Whenever I'm looking at this help with the audio. Because we work with kids from kindergarten to 12th grade in our business, mm -hmm. um, mostly our goal is not about the technology, although that's the tool. We want to get kids into this innovation mindset, this idea of exploring and trying and doing things. Um, I teach computer science. My husband's a physicist. So, you know, we, we're heavy on tech and science. But I'm also looking because I teach CIS at a community college and have for 23 years, um, how I can bring this into my students there also. So my head's been exploding for like three days with all the ideas. Um, right, right. And this looks like this would span at least upper high school, college level. Yeah, I mean, that's the hope. Um, some of the other material on the website has been tried with, with uh, you know, hundreds of students from different ages, but, but the stuff I'm talking about today really has barely been um, tested with real students and stuff. So is there a, a, a different website link or are you talking about the document that you Well, have? so, you know, the, 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 what I call the homepage that we started with, it, it, I think of it as having six chapters. Okay. Um, one thing I'm wondering, by the way, when I was doing this is does, does Zoom, when I switch tabs, does Zoom follows the new tab or has everybody been only yeah. seeing the original tab? If you're sharing the browser window, it'll follow the tabs. So that's what it's been doing? Yeah, I think so. I'm not I sure which one I browser. One. I can see your browser with all the tabs. Okay, good. good. Um, Yeah, like I said, uh, the, the very latest thing I'm pretty excited about is the um, the fact that I the latest version of the Teachable Machine lets you export models you've trained there, and then they just worked right away in uh, Snap. And it was really easy to make a simple example of where some gesture would cause the turtle or the sprite to go left or right, you know, depending on whatever gesture you the two gestures you trained or something or or spoke you know it all just worked very straightforwardly so that kind of a thing i think much younger kids could easily do i mean it's a lot like what the machine learning for kids does but you don't need to have an account or uh, have a good network connection or anything um i have a question um how do you implement for example the the, the program which is just opened um with the with a confident one how do you implement this in the in the um in the classroom or in working with kids so do you have like a not fully completed code and they have to recreate some parts ah, right right yes yeah, so we we haven't been. I, I maybe I'll explain. Well, I, I think our, our our attitude is to create a, a lot of variety of resources that people could then adapt to whoever they want to teach. And what I the, the um, poster I had yesterday was taking a very different approach. Which uh, here no, uh, let's see. Uh, Oh, I could just get there from here. Uh, I'll just do it this way. So the, the, the poster that I had yesterday was, uh, why isn't it? <coughs> was presenting the students with a lot of, um, Sample programs that are where, where it was they're very much designed to be extended and improved. So there's some that deal with speech input and output. There's ones that have to do with 
combining speech with access to some web service like Wikipedia or Yahoo Weather. Um, and then there's ones that have to do with um, fine tuning uh, some existing model where you could add some new examples or new categories. Uh, ones that use um, some of the pre-trained models like the one that's uh, called PoseNet that lets you figure out where your uh, uh, body parts are. So there's, there's a lot of these that we developed. So that's one of the approaches. And then the other one is, is where they kind of take the guides or, or a portion of, of the uh, guides for the for, for teaching and um, it's also possible to just take the, the blocks themselves and then some teacher uh, build a little lesson just around the blocks without any of the these uh, samples so so I guess we we're kind of agnostic as to how it gets used we just think um, that just providing the blocks uh, often isn't enough so we want to give sample programs and programming guides but for some purposes, the blocks are just enough. Um, Ken, how do you insert a running program? How do I uh, uh, do what with a running program? I didn't hear. Insert it into the document. Oh, oh, into the document. Yeah. So, um, actually, I should find out whether with I uh, do Stamp it. Six, if this is a, yeah, I, I, I think people should send me email because I, I kind of did a little custom solution and, and um, it, 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 all that I had to change in Snap was just the um, the home page, basically, the one that kind of loads all the other ones. Um, and then I, there's a little bit of JavaScript that will uh, allow you to do it. But I could, uh, um, I mean, sh if people, I mean, it is something that I tried, by the way, to just do it directly in um, in Snap with the, the release version of Snap. And um, the problem is, you, you, it just started. It just was so so incredibly slow because. Um, even though in theory you could have multiple snaps on a page, they just didn't uh, work very well. And then to be able to, to 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 just see the part that you want and so on. Um, but let me um, show you uh, an example of how it works or something. So if I just go to uh, something like this and then um, – uh, uh, oh, I wonder if uh, are people still seeing, or is this doesn't count? This is the. Um, I was going to show the source for the. Oh, I could do it a different way. Hold on, I could just say uh, view page source, and then if I search for figure, so this is pretty much what I have to just stick in there. Assuming you, the top of the page pulls in my uh, JavaScript library, so you're just basically saying, giving it an ID which corresponds to the to the name of the uh, model and something about how wide and how tall you want and what caption, and then it just puts it there. And it, um, so, but I think if if anybody wants to to do this, send me an email and I'll give you more help with it because. I never did it in a in a release kind of way. I did it in a way to just uh, support my own projects. But it is pretty straightforward once you've got everything set up that you just uh, use something like that. Hi, so maybe this is an easier question. Um, if you want to do the same with that, 
neural net that learns the square roots, and then you want to move to the better model that is the next mm -hmm. one in the examples, and but you want to launch that in its own tab. Um, it doesn't the the block for that isn't there in that example. Is there wow. you move that block? Um, given that it's in the web browser or to do that? <clears throat> yeah. Um, or, just, yeah I, or, can, or does the project, can the project just be loaded from the... From oh, the yeah, project? yeah. So the, all these project projects, uh, oh, yeah, they're, <clears throat> they all have, they've all been shared on the SNAP website, but they haven't been published. So that means that you'd have to know the URL. Um, so specifically, yeah, so specifically, if I'm sitting here right now and deciding that the, 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 the I mean, for the, right now, what I, I could obviously, I could just, load, here, I'll just load it into Snap and put the URL in the, um, okay. in it's the chat. Like but that it, model, the, the sort of naive model, the, the, the introductory model that you have. For right. The group, it's not only is it, of course, not super great at figuring out square roots, but it it's always low. And like, you could sort of play around with whether the yeah. data is doing that or, or what. But it seems at that point, interesting to move to the next one that you call, it's like, well, I don't know what, what you name it, but the second one that you, and the one that you show Right, us. right. And I just- So the to, second, the second one, by the way, I just put, Put the URL in the chat so you, you you could get to it in a full screen. Okay, um, and is the only way to in that 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 open this in a new tab feature that you have if you wanted to use that is the only way to use that to like go to the source. Oh, you can't even do that. This, there's no real there's no real way to move a block from one web snap to another. Web. Yeah, so so what I I've, I mean yeah what I have to do the. You go to a project that has it, then you say export blocks, then you select none, and then you select the one that says open in a oh. new tab, and then import it into the one that's missing it or something. Um, so it gets, it's, it's, yeah, you, you can do it, but it's clumsy. Um, so I forget uh, uh, the end time. Is it, are we ending or we have another eight minutes? What's the, you, you should have until nine o'clock. Yeah, it's eight to nine. Okay, okay, right, right. Okay, good. And then a 10 minute gap before we start at 9 10 for the young thinkers. Oh, right. I knew there was a 10 minute gap. I just was confused about when it started. Um, so, one thing I should maybe mention is um, th what's missing in some sense. So, you know, machine learning also includes. Um, <clears throat> These what are called sequence models, where you 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 know like um, well the famous one now is GPT three, which of course can never fit in the browser because it's got 175 billion parameters or something. But these ones that are kind of uh, um, focused on um, well, the, the, what am I trying to say? There's some classes of of models that are popular that I haven't really provided support for. Like I don't even have anything for convolutional nets or for these uh, recursive um, neural nets or these new things called transformers. There's a lot of things that I keep reading about and thinking about. And also some of them tensorflow.js could support and some of them uh, it'd be difficult. But the point is that it keeps evolving and growing. And like I said, the, the most recent thing that I've quite happy with is that you could take teachable machine models and just bring them right in and use them in your projects. Uh, and then there's reinforcement learning, which would, I think is, it would be quite a challenge to do well, but I don't know. I haven't, I know that there's um, uh, a group in, in Germany that's been doing reinforcement learning in, in SNAP and uh, they have some very nice examples, but it, it, it's only for toy examples, small things, which is, could be good enough pedagogically, but it can't really be something that empowers you to have a project that does something, you know, impressive. Even my um, tic-tac-toe example, it, um, 
it, it, it gets to the point where it beats random about 75, 80% of the time, but it, nothing, it, it doesn't play very well against humans. Uh, but presumably it could, because it could learn from playing with humans. I just haven't played with it enough to have it learn anything or learn very much. Uh, yeah, somebody's asking about reinforcement learning. So yeah, I'm reading about it and thinking about it, but um, and I have very little experience with those models, and I've heard that it, it sometimes could be uh, even much more resource intensive than the kinds of things we've been showing. Um, Oh, maybe uh, I talked about this yesterday in my poster, but um, it's an example that I think was really kind of interesting is where I <clears throat> I took the um, pose net, which is tracking you know, your, your wrist and your elbow and your nose and your eyes and so on, and just made a, a, a really pretty crude app that would say, don't touch your face when you moved your hand close to your face. And um, I did work with these three uh, young women that weren't particularly strong programmers uh, in a little online course where they kept making improvements and improvements where uh, and, and the surprising thing is the way it, it for some of them it kind of evolved into um, a whole different app that was much more about um, what people call filters on your face so you, you get a clown nose and funny glasses but you you, you you're getting the video but they uh, they, they evolved this project that was meant to be a sort of COVID-19 remind you not to touch your face into something very different. Yeah, if I didn't say it before, by the way, all of this stuff is open source and Creative Commons, and uh, you know, so obviously that makes it freely available. And I'm happy to answer questions or give advice. And and there's these two. Um, groups in India that have been um, planning to do some workshops and, and uh, adapting part of the material for and translating it and so on. Uh, and there started to be a project in, in uh, at Beijing Normal University where they also uh, took some of the material and translated it and started trying it out. They, they were trying it out with um, non-computer science undergraduates. Oh, one more thing. Just uh, the, 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 there's that one block I didn't talk about, which is one that that searches for for good hyperparameters. So that rather than you spending your time trying different uh, learning rates or different um, numbers of layers or different widths of layers, you could just let the computer run overnight, saying, you know, just do 50 experiments and tell me which one worked out had the best uh, accuracy or something. So I, I did pr provide a block that in turn searches for good settings for uh, and I haven't tried after creating that gone back and seen if, if it could make a better uh, square root model or something good um, also it's I suppose it should be obvious on this web page there's my email so if people want to ask questions in that way I'm happy to answer Um, and uh, wow, we had 30 participants. Good. And thank you for the session. This is outstanding. I'm so glad we have this recorded so we have it for posterity for some of my other students who need to learn how to expand our stuff. All right, good. BJC. Thanks again. Let's give All right. a hand. Glad to have done it. Woo! Good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful. Right. Don't forget, we've got Young Bye -bye. Thinkers in 10 minutes. Uh, take a break, stretch, get some food, and then come on back. We'll see you in the Thinkers uh, show and tell. See you, everybody. All right. Bye-bye.